Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on this upcoming DCU reboot or just DC reboot from James Gunn. So as most of us should know by now, we have a Green Lantern-focused show coming our way soon. Probably not by 2026. I highly, highly doubt it comes out next year as they haven't even started filming, but probably not, you know, it's probably not coming out until 2026 at this point, unfortunately. But this will be on HBO and it's not the Green Lantern show that would have featured Guy Gardner, though he will be in James Gunn's Superman, and it won't be featuring Alan Scott or even Jessica Cruz, as that was the Greg Belanti produced uh, Green Lantern show for HBO Max. This show coming our way is Lanterns, which will be focused around Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart in a very much true detective style mystery show with those two Green Lantern core members set on Earth. Though you would expect some cosmic stuff mixed there in the mixed in there as well, but at least the main mystery and problem is set on Earth from what we know. But since we got the finer details of what the show of Lanterns would actually be about, the big question has been, who the hell is gonna be playing our Lanterns? We had gotten some reported details previously around the casting information for the two characters of Hal and John, with them looking for Hal to be around his 40s, so mid 30s to mid 40s, and John to be around his 30s, so late 20s to mid 30s, with it likely being that Hal would probably be in his early to mid 40s, based from him being experienced as a Green Lantern vet, or veteran, that's what they sort of said. And of course, there were various fan castings that went down online uh, for various characters, but uh, specifically for Hal. Uh, you know, and as we know, not many fan castings actually happen, but some of the top picks for Hal were that of Glenn Powell and Alden Ehrenreich, uh, just to name a couple. But now, apparently, we have the favourite in the eyes of James Gunn and the people in charge of running the show of Lens. Not for John Stewart, but our experienced member in the form of Hal Jordan. And this report is coming from Nexus Point News, who previously did report the Booster Gold casting announcement of Kamal Nanjani, though that report has not been confirmed or denied by this point, or at this point, by James Gunn, or even backed up by any other outlet at this point in time, which is a bit strange. It's just sort of sitting there in the nether and just still just waiting to be confirmed or denied. But this report, coming from Nexus Point News, is about the Hal Jordan casting. It has been backed by some other people in the know and then added onto, and those people that have added onto it or backed it up have nothing to do with this outlet. So that's, you know, that of course adds more weight to it as well as interest to the report. But this is what they have to say in their report. As the DC Universe continues development in various stages of production on its slated projects, Lanterns continues to be deep into casting its leads, Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. Jordan and Stewart are best known for being members of the Green Lantern Corps and mainstays of the Justice League. We have exclusively learned that Josh Brolin has been offered the role of Green Lantern Hal Jordan in DC Studios' HBO series Lanterns. This version of the character is described as a Lantern legend and will be a veteran member of the Corps. White actors in their 40s and 50s were being looked at for this role until it was determined that Brolin was the top choice for the role of Hal Jordan. DCU leaks exclusively reported over a year ago that Hal Jordan would be a veteran Lantern and John Stewart would be a rookie. It is important to note that although Bro uh, Brolin had, has been offered the role, it is uncertain whether or not he'll accept it. If he were to turn down the offer, they will move down their shortlist to the next option. Always oh, the interesting report there. It uh, caught some eyes in the past couple days. Not sure when this video will go up. But this news, and I'm calling it news rather than a report as I would normally, just due to the fact that multiple people and outlets are reporting the same thing or backing it up. So that's why I'm calling it news rather than a report. Well, this news, it created a bit of a spicy environment online, if you want to put it lightly, probably. Some people were vibing with it, which is fine. But from what I could tell, most people were not vibing with it. And I think with this Josh Brolin casting offer, remember it's an offer. That's a very important thing to push thing. It's not like a, you know, set and done. He's been offered the role apparently. But I think with this offer that's being offered to, you know, Josh Brolin for this role of Hal Jordan, I think the best thing to do is list my pros and cons. As I think that is the easiest way to outline my thoughts on this casting and also what I think others would potentially agree on as a whole, or just like partly agree with maybe just specifically one point or a couple of them. Now, just an added note to put in here before I move on, literally about half an hour before I recorded this video, some extra news has come out about this. Now, this isn't coming from Nexus Point News who originally reported it. It's just coming from Jeff Snyder or the In Snyder, who was one of the people that backed 
this information up saying that he'd heard the same thing, but he's added on to it. And he said that if Josh Brolin declines the role of Hal Jordan, Matthew McConaughey and Ewan McGregor are in consideration for Lens. And of course, it's been wondering like which of these two would get it. So which two of these two do I like the best if it wasn't going to be Josh Brolin? Now, here's the thing. They are all over 50. Matthew and Ewan are a couple of years younger than Josh Brolin, but they're all over the age of 50. Now, Matthew McConaughey, I think, would be the interesting uh, interesting choice here for a couple of reasons. One, I think out of those three, he suits Hal Jordan the most, but also True Detective is a direct inspiration for this series. That's been noted literally from the initial announcement from James Gunn. And if you've watched True Detective, specifically season one, you would know that Matthew McConaughey was in the first season of that show as one of the two main roles, aka, if you want to put it in context of this show of Lens, he was playing one of the two Green Lens in that show. So that's interesting. And maybe this specifically the reason he was noted down, um, but I think out of those two new ones, I think Matthew McConaughey would be the go. But let's swing back to Josh Brolin because he's, from what's being said, the number one choice and has the deciding vote, I guess, in regards to whether those two people are even talked about from this point forward. And just to butt in, this is literally me as I've finished editing the video and everything like that, but two other options came up, those being Chris Pine and Timothy Oliphant. There's no real clear idea in regards to where they would lie in the listings and stuff like that, but I think those two are the best two that have been listed. Out of the five that we have, Josh Brolin, Matthew McConaughey, Ewan McGregor, and now Timothy Oliphant and Chris Pine, I think those two are the best ones there. Chris Pine was a big fan cast for Greenland for a couple of years. So yeah, I think those two are probably the best. I actually think Timothy Oliphant's a really interesting choice just because he's not a massive name, while all those other four contenders are seen as like massive names. So I think Timothy Oliphant is actually a really interesting one, but that's just my two cents there. But let's carry on with what I previously did. So with Josh Brolin, the first point here, we're in the pros. I've got two points for the pros here, and I think I've got three. Oh, no, I think I've only got two. I've only got two for the cons, uh, though you could argue maybe there's three in there. So it's pretty even. Maybe. I don't know necessarily if it's actually even, but you know what I mean. But anyway, the first point in the pros is great actor. Great actor. Like Josh Brolin, you know, when he gets in there, if he's given the role, you know he's going to do a good job. He's not going to sell it. You know, you're going to get some great stuff from him, whether it is maybe even in some comedy stuff, if they need to put that in there or just from some serious acting and just, you know, this show most likely went into some dark corners emotionally and, and thematically and stuff like that. So, you know, you're getting a good actor in the form of Josh Brolin, whether people have just seen him as Thanos or they've seen him in Dune or they've seen him in No Country for Old Men or whatever it is. You've seen him in, you know, whether it's even Jonah Hex, which was ass, but he's in it. I don't think he's sold it in that movie i think he was still trying at the very least well it's the goddamn goonies you know he's been in multiple things so you know he's you know he's a professional you know he's going to do a good job and along with that goes into the second point you know bringing in josh Brolin brings in a well-known actor to the role and it highlights the show though he might not be like leonard dicaprio or denzel washington or something like that he's still a known actor in main thing i mean the fact that he was thanos is enough for maybe some promotion there as well but also dune as well as you know so you bring in a well-known actor to this you know show as it is believed, especially that John Stewart will be cast with a, you know, a fresh actor, if you want to call it. So some, someone that's not really known to many people. So it's, it's not their first acting gig, but they're like, this is their biggest thing. This is their biggest thing they've done. Like for Josh Brolin, this is not the biggest thing he's done. The biggest thing he did was the Avengers stuff uh, or the Marvel stuff. So, it's, you know, now Dune's bigger. It's a big thing in the theater. So this isn't the biggest thing he's done, but for John Stewart, it's led to believe that will be the case. So you need... Like, so having Hal also be experienced as the lantern in the show, but also, I guess, on the acting side, be the more experienced and known face, it makes sense that that would be the path you go down. But here we go into my two cons. And I think the cons just outweigh the what we're seeing here with the pros. But the thing is, is that the first con, I think, just goes with the actors they're looking for as a whole. And it goes along with those th those two other people I mentioned before, Matthew McConaughey and Ewan McGregor. But the first con, and it, it, and it goes along with maybe just their idea for the story. But the first con is the age. I think many thought a mid-40s Hal Jordan would be pushing it. 
like would be pushing it, but would be for the most parts accessible, uh, acceptable. Josh Brolin is 56, will be 50, 57 by the time the show starts filming, most likely because he turns 57 very early next year. And Josh Brolin does look his age for the most part, which isn't an insult. He just looks like he's in his mid-50s, which is fine. The thing is, is that I think if they actually got Matthew McConaughey or even Ewan McGregor, they can actually make it somewhat believable that Hal Jordan is maybe 45, especially with probably, probably Matthew McConaughey. I think they'd be able to make it work. But I have my issues around the age thing there. I'm not, I don't think it's really worth getting into. I might talk about it a bit later, but I think Hal Jordan being that old and you skip over a bunch of the, the history there with the Green Lantern, like the Green Lantern that most people would, you know, think of is a bit of a concern, especially if he's just used to set up other, like it feels like a bit of an insulting thing to the character. And it's not like the character has been used a lot in live action. He was in that, arguably John Stewart has been in more media that people know than Hal Jordan. Like, he's in the movie, but the movie bombed. Like, in, what was it, 2011, 2012, whenever it was. Um, you think you'd try and get some respect back from that movie by doing a better job with the prime Hal Jordan. Anyway, maybe I'm in the wrong. But the second con has to specifically do with Hal Jordan, and it has to do with the casting of Josh Brolin, and just the fact, regardless of whether he's 25 or 65 uh, as a Hal Jordan, Josh Brolin just is not Hal Jordan. Even if he is playing an older version, there was a reason people were fan casting people like Glenn Powell for a mid thirties, Hal Jordan, or even someone like James Marsden for an older version of Hal and he's like forties. And you can probably push that into his fifties as Hal is essentially Iceman, AKA Val Kilmer from Top Gun. That is essentially what the modern character is. Cocky can be seen as a bit of a dick if you want to put it, but he's a hero at the end of the day. And he's, you know, got the will and the courage and everything like that. Josh Brolin just doesn't fit that from the outside looking in. And yeah, obviously he's an actor, duh, but you have to also fit the role. Like that's why people do look at castings when they're announced and go, that won't work. Whether it is not, whether it's because you look like the character, or maybe just you don't, you seem like a, an actor that won't fit whatever the, the show is going to be, or the, the movie is going to be, or what that role will be within that specific show or movie. And I am one hundred percent going to let the creators do what they have to do, let them cook, as they say, when it comes to making the show. And I'm still going to be looking forward to the show, regardless of whether Josh Brolin accepts the offer for Hal Jordan or not. But I think even just the uneven characteriz uh, characterization connections there are just something that irks me. And I definitely think regardless of what happens, I just, because I, I don't like to necessarily like plant myself in concrete, never move, but I just feel like it'll be a miscast. But if they want to characterize Hal Jordan in that way for the show, which wouldn't really be like what he actually is, but it's how they want to characterize Hal Jordan for the show they want to do, which helps them tell the story and whatever it is, then fair enough. Um, but a lot of the universe is being pushed forward as like these accurate castings, which are for the fans and stuff. And I think this one is at least from the outside looking in a clear misstep though, we go back to those pros. As I said, you're still getting a good actor. You know, he's going to do a good job. People are going to watch it. And that's the thing. The general audience probably doesn't care. They probably see Josh Brown. They go, that would be sick. Let's go. So that's probably where Warner Brothers and DC is coming from. Maybe they're not going necessarily for this ridiculously accurate Hal Jordan, regardless of age but just looking for someone that they know can sort of be like a, a very strong anchor for the show. But what is the plan here with the Greenland stuff, both in Lantons and a sort of beyond based off what we're seeing here. Now, John Stewart, it's pretty obvious he's going to be the Justice League Greenland. I think that's what I think is the right idea. I think that's what most people want for the most part, because obviously that really just solely comes from the justice league animated show from back in the day when i guess a lot of us were kids it was when i was on when i was a kid but also people have caught up to it even if they're only born 16 17 years ago because it just replays or it's on streaming and stuff like that but that's where john stewart has always worked the best and been the most popular i guess specifically on a team but on the justice league on that justice league team which makes sense considering the teamwork and his military background but he has never really worked as a solo green land like that's if you know, you know, he's never really worked as a solo Green Lantern, like most people see how Jordan has. Like, unfortunately, whenever they've tried to make him a solo Green Lantern, no one buys his comics, no one really supports him. I mean, there was even that Green, uh, the John Stewart Green Lantern movie, animated movie not too long ago, and no one really backed that. So I see someone else being Green Lantern in a solo movie, if that is going to happen, and John Stewart will be the, I guess, like the, the, yeah, the Justice League Green Lantern, whichever way you want to put it. 
Now, I personally don't see there being a solo movie, but if it does happen and there is another solo Green Lantern movie after this Lantern show, who's going to be the solo Lantern if it's not John Stewart? Well, if Hal wasn't bordering 60, I would say Hal Jordan. But I guess someone like Kyle Rayner makes the most sense. One's because you haven't seen him in live action. And like, you know, we're getting Guy Gardner in Superman. And I highly doubt it. it'd be almost like, especially because Nathan Fillion's playing him. I'd be shocked if Guy Gardner is the solo one. So you could probably go like a really good route with Kyle Rayner if you want to do it. And a lot of people like Kyle Rayner. And you could do more cosmic stuff with him while John Stewart's Lantern is with the League and handling stuff on or around Earth. But here's the thing. I would love... L-O-V-E to see Jessica Cruz. The biggest thing that goes against that is that James Gunn is really crafting this universe on what he is familiar with and what he sees as the DC universe. And Kyle Rayner feels like the most likely one to get solo if, it's, if we're thinking that way. But maybe he is given a suggestion or he has suggested Jessica Cruz and decides to go with her. She has a very interesting backstory for a solo film and, and focus, both as a Lantern and before she's a Green Lantern. And she's also more current in the comics. So I think that is where I would like to see them go, at least in the solo Green Lantern route. But... You know, I mentioned Nicole Rayner, Jessica Cruz. What about Hal Jordan? Well, I think it might be a one and done thing, at least in regards to a major focus for the character when it comes to this show of Lanterns. Sure, he could show up again in a minor way, like in a solo movie alongside Kyle Rayner as like a, I don't know, like advice sort of thing or like mini mentor or whatever it is. But I feel like the show of Lanterns acts as a passing of the main Lantern role over to John Stewart, or at least the one that handles most of the stuff solely on Earth. That's just what it feels like. But anyway, that's all like the, really the thoughts to give there. Lanterns is getting closer and closer to getting into production. Uh, you know, they're having like directors being approached and discussions there. I did see something on that recently. I, I can't remember what the specific director was, but I saw something about that. So I think we will get confirmation on not only this Hal Jordan casting, whether or not it's going to be Josh Brolin or Matthew McConaughey or Ewan McGregor or maybe someone else or maybe they're changing the age. I don't know. Uh, but we'll probably get news on that as well as the John Stewart casting sooner rather than later. But that's a wait and see. The fact that this is being talked about a lot makes you think that maybe they might jump in there just to confirm something before more actors' names get folded into it. Um, but then, as again, as I said, the same source for this gave us the Booster Gold thing. We still haven't heard anything about that. So we'll wait and see, I guess. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on the show. Support let me know in the comment section down below your various thoughts and everything we went over. Always curious to read what you guys are thinking. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.